Hey YouTube! I got a few requests to do a video on playing with the timbres in Animog, and this is a great idea. This comes at a great time too, because we can now add our own custom timbres into Animog, and it helps if you know what you're doing so you're not just making weird squelchy sounds. Uh, and there's also the PPG wave generator coming out really soon, which is going to be very similar to Animog, except you can draw your own waves in. And this comes at a doubly better time because I have run out of ideas for what to do with the IMS 20 series. Uh, pretty much showing you all my tricks, and this is a great idea. You guys just tell me what you want to learn, and I'll you know try to do that if I can. Uh, leave a comment anywhere on my website, I'll see it, and I'll let you know if uh, that's something I can do. Um, let's go figure out wavetables. I've already done a couple of videos on Animoke, but this video is going to assume that you've never seen them or you saw them many months ago and just completely forgot them. But you should still probably go back and check out those other ones for some finer details on how to play with Animog. But this is going to focus just on the wavetable synthesis. So Animog is very much like any other synthesizer. You know, it doesn't matter that it's wavetable. We've still got our filter over here and we got our envelopes over here. And, you know, it's all basically still synthesis. The only difference is that instead of having, uh, you know, four or three different sounds on an oscillator we've got all of these sounds every single little square over here is a, a different sound so we know which sound we're getting out of all these various squares by where the circles appear so in that case it was starting over here and then it wandered over here and we were getting different sounds based on where the little circle is going so we've got eight rows of 16 squares for 128 different sounds that we can get instead of just the you know saw and square and stuff like that, that we got with IMS 20 and uh, various other synthesizers this is giving us a hell of a lot of different sounds so let's explore that and see how that's working by looking at the default patch which is a really beautiful sounding patch and you see on this the circle's doing all kinds of crazy, right? It's going in a big triangle, and it's going left to right, and then right to left. So it's traveling through all of those various squares all over the place, just zoom, 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 zoom. And the sound that it's making is based on these timbers over here. So we've got the static fat saw one on every single one of these squares, and it's going through that at different points throughout. And we can look at that waveform and see that we have 16 distinct waveforms that are all the same fat saw. And that fits neatly into our grid of 16 by 8. And as soon as you switch that, like here's a variation on that where I've changed the timbres from the fat saws to a pulse. It's not quite as pretty sounding, but it's still nice, you know. It's doing the same, you know, rapid rotation all over the place. And we can look at that wave and see that there is some variation going on. It's no longer the same exact thing over and over and over again. It's 16 different slices of different pulse lengths and stuff. And we can make it even more complex. Uh, here I've loaded up. Uh, what uh, Animo refers to as the uh, synth basic. And once again, this is just on all eight of these rows, the same wavetable, but it begins to sound really discordant when you're playing chords. And even when you're playing a, a single note, you're, you're hearing all kinds of weird wobbly stuff going on. You know, it's doing the same thing, and you can actually see there on the oscilloscope that it's having a really hard time deciding what shape it's supposed to be in. And if you look at that waveform, you see why it's got all kinds of different stuff going on here. But when you get into even more complex waves, things get to be a complete mess when you've got it doing this fast cycling. So here's my own timbre, the turbo square, and you hear that that sounds like complete shit when it's it's being spun around like this. But I can immediately calm this down. Like even, once again, just a single note, it sounds like shit. But I can calm this down. And 
Now, it's still a very rich and complex waveform, but it's not you know, crazy rapid triangles everywhere. And when we got all these complex shapes going on with the circles, that's when Animog is trying to decide what sound to make using its anisotropic engine, where it's trying to blend together and morph all these various waves together. Even though it's the same wave, it's, it's getting it from different positions and it's trying to make a single wave out of all of this information that's being thrown at it really, really fast. But as soon as I calmed it down and I'm just giving it a line to play, you know, it's just going straight across with a little bit of uh, uh, stuff from the bottom here. But there's no, you know, hugely confusing thing going on here. It's just playing that wave file. And this is the best way to approach wavetable synthesis is simply, and then you build up complexity from the simple spots that make sounds that you like. And I've got an example of that as I was playing in, in the intro here. Right there, it's using the turbo square with the litmus timbres. So it's getting, you know, about 75% of the litmus and then maybe 25% of the turbo square. And it's combining those two in this position. And then as it travels to the right, uh, it's getting different information from both of those wavetables saying, okay, well, it's changing and I'm going to change to this shape based on these two wavetables that I'm in the middle of. And the way you as a user can make use of that is to find a whole bunch of sounds that you like. I just go through and I preview them. You know, and you, you set up a whole bunch of eight of these and you just go through and explore this. You don't want to try to overthink this or try to do the complex math of like wave differentials and phase distortion, all this other shit, because that's what Animog is doing. You don't have to worry about that. You do the music, not the math. So just hit a, you know, any key you want. I usually try to stick to the center here so that I can hear how it's going to sound with the lower notes. See, so that's sounding pretty good here. And I just drag my finger along lightly. That sounds pretty damn good, right? But we're still sticking to the same two timbres. We're just at a different position now. So now I, I remember that it sounded pretty good over here and it sounds really good over here. And now I can, you know, surf around and find new mixes here. So now I'm mixing in the third timbre, which is the circuit growl on top of the turbo square. There's something particularly shrill in there. That's kind of interesting. So, you know, I just make a mental note of that. That's what kind of sound I get when the circle's over in this position. you're hearing how that's really 128 different sounds. So now I have a few spots on this grid that I know that I like, and I want to play those spots musically. And, you know, I can just use it the way it is right now. I've got a little bit of uh, orbit going on here with just a little bit of the X amounts, which is just going back and forth. You can make it wander a little bit with the Y. Remember when we speed it up, that's when we start to get into the weird, like, just messy sounds. Because these are really complex waveforms. So I like that. That's gentle. It's moving around in these, this little area that sounds particularly good. And that's what I want to accentuate. And now we can play around with this even more with all the various envelopes as well as the path. Now I'm going to start off by showing you how to use the path here. I know that this position sounds really good. So I'm going to make a little dot here 
And I know that there was a position down at about right here that was also pretty good sounding, so let's listen to how that sounds. And you may recognize that that's kind of a very typical sound that you get with Animo. Even though I'm using my own timbres, this is just the signature sound of the Animo. It's a very electric-y sort of sound. If I want, I can get you know, really fancy with it and say, hey, I want to grab that sound that I heard over here and then go back over here. And maybe while I'm over here, I want it to spend a little bit more time in this spot. And it will travel through each of these segments for the same amount of time. So if it takes it you know, uh, three seconds to travel through this side, it'll take it three seconds just to move through this small section right here. And the path is going too fast, so I'm getting that you know, messy sound that we were getting before. So now I'm traveling through five different wavetables and different points within each of those. And I can gain control over how that's sounding, because, you know, this is just kind of a random zoom, zoom, zoom thing that's going on here. Even though I've slowed it down, it's still a little bit out of my control. So I want to take control of how this is sounding rather than letting the path tell me where I'm going to be. So I'm completely taking out the path. I'm going to get rid of the orbit stuff altogether just so this isn't extra confusing. Make sure you turn off sync if you want to do this because when it's set to sync, it's still got a value. So now it's just staying at the top there. I can take complete control of where on the path this sound is going to be. So I can come into our mod and you see I've already got poly pressure, which is the up and down assigned to the filter frequency. I'm going to do that again, except instead of the filter frequency, I'm going to tell it to go to the path origin. And this is kind of awesome because now, depending on where I'm hitting it, See, at the top here, I got the little dot down here. But at the bottom, it's up at the top. I can move it along. And this extra little bit that I did here at the end uh, gives me a much finer resolution over how long it's going to be staying in that area based on where my finger is positioned. And you can really make use of that. So now at the top, I move my finger all over the place and it's still pretty much staying in that one area. And the middle is doing this. And the bottom is doing that. So from playing around with this, I know that uh, the bottom part of my path here sounds really good for bass stuff. So if I play my bass notes up high, I'm staying down in the low area there. But higher notes sound a little shrill. So instead of playing them up high, I'm going to play them in the middle to get one tone, and at the very bottom to get an entirely different tone. So depending on how clean I want the sound to be, I can just adjust my finger placement. So we've used the mod section to gain control over our sound. But we can go the exact opposite direction now and introduce complete craziness, but still have control over the crazy. I'm going to throw in an extra mod here. I'm going to tell it to use the LFO to drive the orbit amount. And you see, I've still got everything zeroed out here. It's just going to be the LFO telling it to move the X. And I'm going to tell it to do that a lot and often. And I'm going to use a noise thing so it's random. So now it wobbles all over the place. I got it just wobbling a little bit. If you want to, you can crank up the LFO. I'm 
speed there and now it's going all over the place even more, but I think it's more interesting when you have it just doing it a little bit. So it's traveling between the places we're telling it to go on the path on our wavetables, and then it's just wandering around a little bit. And all of that, every single part of that process is adding a rich sort of texture to our sound. And this is the sort of sound you go for in things like dubstep and other aggressive electronica, where you've just got all kinds of different stuff going on in this one synth sound that's just a stabby. You know, it's, it's right there in your face doing all kinds of great stuff in different frequencies.